Hi, my name is Greg Caparaso. Um, in this section of the tutorial, I am going to uh, work through a quick command line refresher. So I'm going into this assuming that you have some command line experience, but maybe not a lot, or maybe it's been a while since you've used the command line. And so we will end up um, talking about some file system concepts. Um, specifically, we'll talk about relative and absolute paths, your home directory, and the root directory. We'll then go through a little bit of interactive work um, using some important built-in commands that are really like the essential need-to-know commands for working on a Linux system. And I'll show you some shortcuts that you can use to make your command line work more efficient. I want to start this by talking about file paths and directory paths. File paths specify the location of a file on your computer, while a directory path specifies the location of a directory on your computer. You can also, you may have also heard directories referred to as folders. Those two terms are synonymous, um, and most people end up going back and forth between using the term uh, folder and the term directory. I may do that myself in this workshop. The, um, either of these path types, um, so I'll generally call these paths, directory paths or file paths, can be relative, which mean uh, that their meaning is dependent on where you currently are on the file system, or they can be absolute, meaning that it, uh, their meaning is not relative to where you are on the file system. Um, they're rather fully specified with respect to the root of the file system. Now, the root of the file system, um, otherwise known as the root directory, is a special directory that contains all of the other files and directories on the computer. The root directory is specified by having a slash at the beginning of, the, of a path. Um, and so if you see a path like the ones that I have below that start with a slash, that means that they are absolute file paths. So I've got three listed here. The first one is uh, specifying the root directory itself. The second one is specifying a special directory. Um, this would be my home directory on the file system. And so that would be slash home slash Greg. The last one is a file path that is underneath my home directory. So it's under slash home slash Greg. And this is a directory where I, can, uh, where I store photos of my chickens. I have one in there called Barbara.png. Barbara is one of my chickens. And so that would be a photo of her. Um, so I mentioned the location specified by an absolute path doesn't change meaning regardless of where you are on the file system. On the other hand, a relative path does change meaning depending on where you are on the file system. And so here you see two relative paths. The first one is chicken photos. That's a directory path. The second one is chicken photos slash Barbara.png. That's a file path. Notice that these do not start with a slash. And so that is a big hint to you that these are relative paths, not absolute paths. Now, I mentioned my home directory a couple of times. This is an important directory on the file system. This is generally where you would store your files. So like you saw, that was where I store my photos of chickens. Um, and it's also the directory that you'll be in when you log into the server. Um, so on Linux-based systems, the absolute path to your home directory is slash home slash username, where username is your name on the system. And so for me, that might be Greg. The home, your home directory is also abbreviated in a few ways that your computer will understand. Um, first, you'll often see it abbreviated as the tilde or squiggle. Um, and you may also see it abbreviated as dollar sign home, all capital letters. Since these are abbreviations of an absolute file path, they work like file, they work like absolute file paths, even though they don't start with a slash. What I'd like to do now is work through some important built-in commands that you would find on any Linux system. Since this is just intended to be a, a refresher, I'm just going to cover four of the commands that are on this list right now. But I'm providing these so that you can use that as a uh, point 
of additional study. And so if you'd like to um, develop some really powerful skills working on a command line, you can do that um, getting started with just the commands that are in this list. At the end of this session, I'll provide a few resources that can help you with your next steps. The commands that we're going to cover here are pwd, ls, cd, and mkdir. Now, I just want to take a quick minute to talk about the anatomy of a command. Um, so when we look at the command ls, which lists the contents of a directory, um, we can either provide that on its own, um, as you see this first form, um, we could provide some options to it. And so when you provide options, you would do that by either specifying a single dash or a double dash, um, depending on the command that you're using and the option that you're providing. Um, and those options are gonna change the behavior of that program or that command in some way. Some commands may also take an argument, which is effectively something that you're providing as input to that command. And we'll take, a, we'll take a look at this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my um, Google Chrome browser. And I'm going to type chrome colon slash slash apps. That will give me the screen here where I can see my secure shell apps my secure shell app and some other apps that I have installed here. I'm gonna click on secure shell for now. This will bring you to a window that looks like what I have up here. Um, you may have already established your connection. This is the first time that I'm logging into this workshop server. So I'm gonna enter my username and host name now. These are information that we have already provided to you. My username is Astute Reindeer, and the host name, which will be the same for you, is workshop server.chime2.org. And then I'll come over and hit enter. So I just hit a bit of a snag here, and this is something that I've run into before. Um, the first time that I enter my username and host name, um, the Secure Shell app wants me to click in this box up here, which is currently highlighted in red. Um, and what that does, I believe, is it adds this as a new connection. Um, and so I was not able to actually connect until I clicked in that box. Now I can hit enter and I'm prompted for my password now logged into the system. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type clear, which just gets rid of uh, any information that is currently in this terminal window. What you can see now is I have my command prompt, and the command prompt um, is this dollar sign symbol. And what that means is the, the shell, which is the program that I'm interacting with here, is waiting for me to give it a command, for me to tell it what to do. The command prompt that we have set up on the workshop server is a pretty fancy one. It's a two line prompt where you can see on the first line, it's showing what our current working directory is. So that means that uh, th this is the directory that we are currently in on the file system. Now, I mentioned earlier that you will typically start in your home directory. Um, that's what's happened here. Um, on this server, my home directory is slash mnt slash home slash astute reindeer. Again, astute reindeer is my username on this system. The first of the commands that I wanted to show you is pwd. So if I type pwd here, that stands for print working directory, or in other words, print current directory. So if I type that, you'll see that that is printing that one line to the screen. It's printing the directory that I'm currently in, um, and then I get my command prompt back. The next command I wanna show you here is ls, which will list the contents of the current directory. So if I type ls, you can see that right now, 
I have one directory here, and that is called workshop. Um, if I wanted to, I could uh, also look at the contents of workshop. And the way that I would do that is by providing workshop as an argument to the ls command. So I could type ls workshop. And at the moment, I don't have any files in that directory. And so I won't get anything back as output. Now, I want to show you a quick tip here um, that will save you some typing on the command line. If I were to type lswo, what I could do is I could hit the tab key, and then we'll autocomplete the name of the workshop directory. The reason that works is because there was only one either file or directory in my current directory that started with wo. And so the, uh, the shell is able to tell what I mean if I just type those two letters. And so if I type, or if I hit enter now, I'll get the same thing. It'll just show me there's nothing in that directory. The next command I wanna show you is CD. Um, and so if I type CD workshop, that is gonna change my working directory. Now, with this fancy uh, command prompt that we have here, you can already see that that's been changed. So now you can see that I'm in the workshop directory. Um, if I didn't have that fancy command prompt, I could just type pwd, and that would tell me that I'm now in mount home astute reindeer workshop. If I wanted to change directories back to my home directory, a shortcut for doing that is the cd command. So regardless of where I am, cd is always going to take me back home. Um, so we've now seen how cd works if you provide it with an argument, and that happened when I provided cd workshop above, and you can see what happens when I don't provide an argument. So if I do cd uh, with nothing after it, it takes me just back to my home directory. So I'm gonna cd back to my workshop directory and I'm just gonna type cdw and then hit the tab key. And you can see my working directory is now, has now changed to mount home astute reindeer workshop. The last command I wanna show you in this, uh, in this tutorial is mkdir. This stands for make directory. And this is a command that requires that I provided an argument. And what I am required to provide is the name of the, the directory that I want to create. And so just to set us up for the next section of the workshop, I'm going to say mkdir mouse underscore tutorial. And notice that when I create that directory, I don't necessarily see anything happened. I have to type ls, and when I type ls, I can see that mouse tutorial now exists. Because that's a directory, I can change into it. So I typed cd mo, and then I hit the tab key, and that auto completed. And you can see that my working directory has now changed. I'm now in mount home astute reindeer workshop mouse tutorial. If I want to go back to my home directory now, I can type cd. If I wanted to say change directly into that mouse tutorial directory, I could use the command uh, tab completion to help me with that. I could say cd workshop and that'll be auto completed. And then I could type m, hit tab, and that would auto complete. That'll put me in that workshop mouse tutorial directory. Another handy uh, shortcut for using CD is if I type CD dot dot. What that means is I want to change one directory up from where I currently am. And so if I type CD dot dot, you can see that I changed to my mount home astute reindeer workshop directory. If I type cd dot dot again, 
that will now, this time, bring me to my home directory, Mount Home Astute Reindeer. The last thing that I want to show you here is the uh, use of the up and the down arrow to scroll through my history. So if I hit the up arrow, you can see that I can start scrolling through all of the commands that I've run so far. And so I'm just now hitting the down arrow and I can run through all of the commands that I've previously ran. If I hit enter, when I've uh, landed on this CD workshop mouse tutorial, that will allow me to rerun that command. And so you can see my working directory changed to workshop mouse underscore tutorial. I'm going to type CD to get back to my home directory. And that is everything I want to show you in this section. Um, and briefly, I just want to mention a few of the more advanced commands that we'll use in this workshop. Um, in this workshop, we will be using curl or wget. We might use these interchangeably. Um, and what these commands do is they download a file from the internet given its location. And so if you provide a file URL, you can use one of these commands to download that to the server that you're currently connected to. The other command that we'll spend a lot of time with here is the chime command. And that allows you to use the chime2 program through its command line interface. That brings us to the end of the command line refresher section of the workshop. I want to end this by pointing you at some resources for practicing or learning more. A great resource for this is the Carpentries, um, including Software Carpentry and Data Carpentry. They have many lessons on their website. Uh, a very relevant one for this would be their Unix shell lesson. And they also are regularly teaching lessons, uh, or they're regularly teaching workshops around the world where you can learn um, data management skills and pro programming skills and uh, command line skills. Another resource is Jocelyn Lee's lesson that she developed for a Chime 2 workshop a couple of years ago. This works through the commands that I provided earlier and which I suggested would be a great initial set of commands for you to learn to uh, begin very effectively working with command line software. Okay, thank you very much. And I look forward to working with you later in the workshop.